6.48 is the time now. It's been more than 40 years since school teacher Gordon Sumner reinvented himself. He's now recognised, of course, as a global success and award-winning musician, Sting. So, message in a bottle. Every breath you take, his songs are known by millions. And later today, he's joining the likes of Elton John and Paul McCartney by becoming a fellow of the Ivor Novello Songwriting Academy. And he's been talking to our music correspondent, Mark Savage, ahead of the ceremony. Sting, welcome to BBC Breakfast. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. We are here because you're being given the fellowship of the Ivor Novellos Academy. Now, for people who don't know what that is, explain why that's so important. Yeah, it sounds a bit like Lord of the Rings, doesn't it? A, fel <laughs> a fellowship. It's very meaningful to me because that's what I put on my passport. What am I? I'm a songwriter. That's my profession, and it's a profession I'm very proud of. The first hit song you had was Roxanne. Do you remember listening to the chart countdown on Radio 1 the week that went into Yeah, I was uh, in my kitchen in Bayswater uh, on a, a plank on, on top of the ladders painting the ceiling with some white emulsion and I had Radio 1 on and I suddenly recognised the song. <laughs> It's Roxanne, and I literally fell off the off the ladder and immediately called the other guys in the band and said, we're on the radio. There, yeah, they were listening to. But nothing will ever beat that first you know, time you hear it yourself on the radio. That is incredible. And then you write what is, I think, the most played radio song of all time. Well, that's interesting because the song that, that was, did have that position before that was You've Lost That Loving Feeling by the Righteous Brothers. Now, that's one of my favorite songs of all time. And I think it's from 1966. So I was 14, 15 at the time. And uh, for one of my songs to supersede that, I still can't quite get my head, head around it. I've always wondered, you wrote it in Ian Fleming's Goldeneye House. It was in 1982 and Ian, Ian Fleming's house, Ian Fleming's desk was there and at night I would sit and try and write songs. And I, I think the song of the spirit of James Bond in this song, because it's so ambiguous, you know, it's, it's a love song, but it's also quite sinister. And tell me about Fields of Gold, because that's a song Paul McCartney said he wished he'd written. Well, there are... I can't tell you how many of Paul McCartney songs I wish I'd written. So she this is songwriting is kind of mysterious. You know, I, to this day, I'm not quite sure I understand it. I'm very happy when it comes, but there's no formula. My satisfaction at finishing a song lasts about 20 minutes, wow. and then I get anxious about where the next song is coming from. I wondered, as a professional songwriter, have you been watching The Edge here in Copyright Trial? Yes. What did you make of that? Uh, I was glad that Ed won. Um, I think the building blocks of music um, we hold in common, all of us, songwriters. Um, it cannot be owned by any one person or any entity. Um, much less can it be owned by a artificial um, in machine intelligence. What's your take on that? Because I think there've been, I guess what you could call convincing facsimiles of music. It's similar to the way I, I, I watch a movie with CGI, you know, it doesn't impress me at all. I, I get immediately bored when I see a computer-generated image. 
Um, I imagine I will feel the same way about uh, AI making music. You know, I think maybe for electronic dance music it works, but for songs, you know, expressing emotions, I don't think I will be moved by it. So that was Sting speaking to our music correspondent, Mark Savage. Extraordinary career, isn't it? He's just got this great songs along the way. Beautiful voice as well. Lovely. Um, it's coming out to six minutes. Well, it is six minutes to seven. We've Hi player. <laughs>